Now then, did you know the Green Party had its best ever election results in London last week, coming third in the mayoral race? It was a good week too for the Scottish Greens, separate party, who saw their numbers rise from two MSPs to six. A trebling. Well, I'm joined now by the party's leader, Natalie Bennett. And a big smile on your face, and uh, why wouldn't there be, particularly uh, with that uh, London performance? But, I mean, do you think that you are more of a metropolitan party than anything else? Oh, absolutely not. If you look around the country, you, we've won our first councillors on, on a wide range of places right down from uh, down in Weymouth, down in the southwest, uh, up to Cannock, um, where we've got a really great candidate who, who got more votes almost than the Tories and uh, Labour put together to win our first seat on Cannock Council in Hennesford. Um, yeah, we're spread right around the country. We did very well in Sheffield. Um, this is a case for the Green Party, really, the Green Surge last year. We're really consolidating and growing right around the country. But, I mean, are you just benefiting, really, from uh, Labour's weaknesses? I mean, there's some policy overlaps there, and, uh, you know, Labour didn't do uh, too well with the best will in the world and, and parties like yours then benefit well actually you'll find the majority of seats that we took were actually off the Tories uh, you'll find around the country um, and if you take places like you uh, Sully Hull where we're the, already the official opposition on the council we grew there in Stroud we do, grew there there's a wide range of places all around the country where we're growing and developing and you know but as you say you know, London is a huge cause of celebration Sean Berry really was rewarded for an excellent campaign a real positive campaign putting forward lots of good ideas ideas about transport and housing. And I do also, in, in your UK wide roundup, have to add the Northern Ireland Greens, yeah. who, got, who uh, doubled their representation, now have two seats on the Northern Ireland Assembly. But is there now, I mean, we've talked for some uh, months and indeed years about the fragmentation, about people mm -hmm. moving away from the, from the big parties. Uh, did we see it in these, in these elections last week, that there is now almost a crying out for a real progressive alliance, not the, not the ad hoc nature of, you know, we're against the government and we'll vote wherever we like, for, for all you other leaders and parties to think, I suppose, you know, more pragmatically and systematically about getting your heads together? Well, I think where the, the loudest cry is coming very loudly and clearly, and this was heard in Westminster yesterday at the Make Votes Matter mm. rally, is for a change in the electoral system and in to first past the post, which really is clearly you know, thoroughly out of date. If you take a seat up on, on the Wirral, uh, where we got, in a six-candidate race, we got 43% of the vote and our candidate wasn't elected. 43% of electors you know, didn't see their wishes fulfilled. Uh, first past the post is designed for a two-party system. We no longer have a two-party system. If you look at um, the last figure I saw from the BBC where they were extrapolating towards the national vote share and imagining a general election, you know, it was 39% of people were not voting Labour or Tory. Electoral reform absolutely has to be on the agenda now. Uh, that's both in the local mm. government elections and indeed, of course, in Westminster. But I mean, on the question of you know, where things stand now, I mean, I was looking at the London result. Uh, the Women's Equality Party did uh, did very well uh, as well uh, in London, and one thinks again, lots of lots of overlaps between your parties. Aren't you cutting each other's throats? Here? Well, I think you know, we're always, as the Green Party, prepared to work with people who agree with us on any issues, working together cooperatively. That's something that's always happened and always will happen. We're interested in putting our policy ideas into action, but I think we really must not get away from the fact that you. Know, across the road here from Westminster, the last significant change in the Commons was women getting the vote. That was 1918. It really is time that, you know, we're well, coming up to the centenary of that. That would be a great point at which to, uh, to see a, a change in the electoral make. system. Because, you know, Westminster really looks a bit uh, male and stale, doesn't it, uh, compared to when we've looked at uh, those election results as they came in right across the nations and regions. So many great powerful female leaders of parties and a first minister as well. I mean, you know, Westminster really needs a bit of a shake-up. Well, well, exactly. And if you look again in London, you look at two of the candidates, Rashid Nix and Samir Gerard, who did great for us in the constituencies in Lambeth and Hackney. You know, those are places where, where the electoral system is just not allowing great people to come through because it's so stuck in that two-party framework. We really need to need to see changes, need to see development across there. And, you know, one of the... But the, aren't getting more women there? I mean, do we need quotas or something? Something like that, yeah. uh, well, well, I, I was uh, at the demonstration yesterday. Uh, we had the 50-50 Parliament campaign, which is a great campaign. And, you know, we have 29% women there. But if it's not the only issue, of course. You know, we really have huge underrepresentation of people from the black, Asian and minority ethnic communities, underrepresentation of disabled people, underrepresentation yeah. of people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Um, there's really only one group I think we could definitely see a lot less of, and that might be, you know, people who went to Eton, really. <laughs> now, what's happening uh, to you, as I say, uh, female leaders of... Of, of parties. Isn't your 
term up uh, very soon as as leader of the Greens. When do you leave and who takes over? Do we know or do you all, <laughs> well, do you all uh, kind of meet the tent and hum or something? I don't know. Excuse, uh, me. Excuse me for that. That was a low, that was a low blow. But, uh, I, I, I how is your, called, how is your successor <laughs> selected? I think that's called a, ver a very out-of-date stereotype. In, absolutely. Uh, well, what, well, the way it works in the Green Party is, is every two years the post of leader is up for re-election. Um, at the moment, I'm still focused on these elections. In fact, we're still waiting here from the results from Bristol Council and all that council election which has been counted right. this afternoon in Bristol. But would you so, see this as your high watermark? This is your legacy. <laughs> uh, no, at the moment I'm thinking about what happens next. I'll be thinking about that at the right time once we've finished this set of elections, which we haven't finished yet. All right. Uh, onwards and upwards, uh, Natalie Bennett. Thank you very much indeed. The Green Party leader there.